fight, fight, fight for Washington State and big. A larger-than-life comedian, an ordinary guy almost anyone could identify with, a naturally lovable persona, we're talking John Candy. The man was fantastic, and the way he approached his roles exposed the more innocent and lovable sides of nearly every character he portrayed. The world lost John Candy to a heart attack in 1994, but he left behind a legacy of roles for us all to look back fondly on. In today's list, we'll be taking a look at some of those roles as we count down the top 10 John Candy movies of all time. Number 10, The Great Outdoors. Is that a fact? Well, nobody forced you to come up here, buddy boy. A hilarious early collaboration between John Candy and John Hughes, The Great Outdoors stars Candy and Dan Aykroyd as dueling brothers-in-law trying to one-up each other with disastrous results during a doomed camping trip. Although critics' reviews were mixed, the movie ended up grossing over $43 million worldwide against a $6.1 million budget. The Great Outdoors entered back into the public consciousness recently when a remake starring Kevin Hart and Nia Long hit the screens in 2017. It is important to note here that The Great Outdoors not only holds distinction among John Candy's movies just because of its lively and comical atmosphere, it is also the film debut of Annette Bening. What was that? Ruining your vacation? Is that what you said? Oh, come on. Number 9, Stripes. Sergeant, does this mean we're through for the day? When you're cast in an ensemble that includes absolute comedic powerhouses like Bill Murray, Harold Ramis, and John Larroquette, it can be hard to stand out, but not everyone is John Candy. In one of the most successful films of 1981, Stripes centers on a small band of misfit army recruits who do everything they can to still have a good time while faking their way through boot camp. Candy plays Dewey Ox Oxenberg, a lovable goof that was the kind of role he found himself almost typecast into during the early 1980s. Had this role been played by anyone but John Candy, then Ox would have just been an unremarkable side role in a semi-raunch fest. The innocence and dim-wittedness that John Candy brought to this role made him stand out among a cast of total legends. Which is perfect for me. I'm gonna walk out of here a lean, mean, fighting machine. <laughs> <laughs> Number 8, The Blues Brothers. Who wants an orange whip? Orange whip? Orange whip? A lot of John Candy's early supporting roles saw him playing a lot of authority figures, something we can really only attribute to his fantastic acting range and imposing stature. Playing the parole officer of the eponymous Blues Brothers, Jake and Elwood Blues, as they rhythmically flee the police, Candy turns in exactly the type of performance you would want. The culmination of his efforts lands him inside of a tractor trailer during the film's now infamous car chase scene. We would be lying if we didn't think that he would rather be listening to the blues than chasing them. This gentleman is the elegant abode of one Elwood Blues. Yeah, thanks for your help, Mr. Merton. Number 7, Little Shop of Horrors. Hi everybody, it's Weird. Wink Wilkinson laughing and scratching. At you. How's everybody doing today? John Candy's appearance in this black comedy musical from director Frank Oz is very short but extremely memorable. Serving as a screen adaptation from the 1982 musical with the same name, Little Shop of Horrors tells the story of Aubrey II, an alien plant with a taste for blood. Candy pops up in the movie's second act as the host of the weirdo radio show, Wink Wilkinson's Weird World, which features items that can only be described as… weird. Making a gig in radio look like the best job in the world, especially when compared to dentists, was something that John Candy seemed to do flawlessly. We're sure the fact that none of the listeners could actually see the weird stuff was not a joke lost on any of you. Seymour, where did you get such a weird plant? Number 6, JFK. It's just a figment of my imagination. The cat's stealing you. The oyster's shucking you, I told him. Ending our list with one of his more serious roles, in 1991, John Candy played disgraced New Orleans lawyer Dean Andrews Jr., who submitted a false testimony during the Warren Commission, the investigation into the assassination of President John F. Kennedy. Andrews was later convicted on three counts of perjury. John Candy was supposedly so nervous about appearing in a film as monumental as JFK that in the scene where he meets Kevin Costner's character, Jim Garrison, for the first time, the sweat you see was all produced by Candy himself. While it has been reported that Oliver Stone's main reason for casting Candy was due to his uncanny physical resemblance to Dean Andrews Jr., we find it hard to believe that Candy's version of a Southern drawl was also a huge selling point. You're as crazy as your mama. Goes to show it's in the jeans. 
Number five, Home Alone. Excuse me. Can you excuse us for a second? Can I see you for a second, please? Excuse us. Although technically not a John Candy movie, we're still including this amazing holiday classic because of the minor yet iconic character he played in Home Alone. If you are among the very small number of people that missed out on Home Alone over the past 20 plus years, John Candy plays self-proclaimed polka king of the Midwest, Gus Polinski. After overhearing Kate McAllister, played by his former SCTV castmate, Catherine O'Hara, tell a heartbreaking story about trying to get back to her son for Christmas, he offers her a ride in the back of his van. As they're driving towards Chicago, Gus Polinski and his band, the Kenosha Kickers, play their own version of the song, Deck the Halls. John Candy's appearance in Home Alone was a gem in the long-running collaboration between Candy and director John Hughes. Oh, jeez. If you have to get to Chicago, we'll, we'll gladly drive you. It's on the way to Milwaukee. Number four, planes, trains, and automobiles. Oh, I gave this gal behind the counter instead of shower curtain rings. <laughs> This movie is yet another acclaimed hit from the Johns, this time bringing eventual comedy legend Steve Martin along for the ride. Critics overall adored this one due to the apparent change in style from John Hughes' previous movies, leaving behind the angsty vibes he had started to become known for. Following two traveling salesmen who couldn't be any more different from one another, Planes, Trains, and Automobiles was shot over an 85-day period, which was a relatively short time frame for productions of its size. If there was ever a movie that depicted John Candy at his peak, this would definitely be the one. You want to take a shower? No. No, I meant if you want to go first. Or not. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you, you thought I... No, go ahead. Oh, I would... <laughs> what do you think I am? Number three, Spaceballs. Holy... In this Mel Brooks-directed Star Wars spoof, Spaceballs, John Candy plays Barf, a man-dog hybrid called a Mog. He's his own best friend. Playing the well-thought-out take on Chewbacca to perfection, Candy stands out among other ensemble cast, which includes Bill Pullman, Rick Moranis, and Mel Brooks himself. Spaceballs was one of the many movies in the 1980s, including the previous year's previously mentioned Little Shop of Horrors, that Candy would share screen time with his old SCTV friend and castmate Rick Moranis. Of course, none of this is probably a shock since you've most likely seen Spaceballs as many times as you've seen Star Wars. Look, it's got a mind of its own, sweetheart. I can't do a thing with it. <laughs> oh! Number two, Cool Runnings. That's it! Good tumbling! Good tumbling! This sports comedy film, which was very loosely based on the story of the first ever Jamaican bobsled team, was a rare Disney outing from John Candy, who was always looking to expand his repertoire. Playing the team's fictional coach, Irv Blitzer, John Candy turns in yet another memorable performance. For so many who would now be considered elder millennials, Cool Runnings was the definitive John Candy movie. Coming out at a time when sports comedies like The Mighty Ducks and The Air Up There were just as rampant as Marvel movies are today, Cool Runnings received high praise among both critics and fans. Much of this was due to the fact that, even though it did follow a few tropes, Cool Runnings didn't feel as formulaic as some of its counterparts. Thanks, Irv. Thank you. <laughs> Our number one pick is Uncle Buck. Hey, how you doing? Who are you? I'm your Uncle Buck. Continuing down the line of the absolutely side-splitting collaborations from what we will henceforth refer to as the Johns, we get to the priceless family movie Uncle Buck. Playing the titular Buck, a slovenly bachelor who is tasked with being a nanny to his nephew and nieces for a weekend, John Candy turns in one of his most memorable roles. He plays Buck with the same heart and warmth he continued to show us time and time again throughout his career, turning a character who would normally be looked down on by society into a sweet and encouraging example for us all. Although not his first role, Uncle Buck helped give Macaulay Culkin the momentum he needed to take over the pop culture when Home Alone was released the following year. What did you, what did you have, a few drinks this morning? Do you agree with our list? Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and be the first to receive new top 10 videos from Stream TV.